Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies. Today I want to look at this new bow on offer from Toe Point Archery or from Diabo. It's called the Vigor. Um, it's new, literally just came to my store today. So I just wanted to show it to you, um, show you the latest offerings out of China and some new technology I thought was interesting. So I think, let's, let me just pull some numbers off the top of my head or maybe I should just read the spec chart here. I'm going to guess 31 inches axle axle. The bow says it shoots at 350 feet per second. If it shoots that, I'll be amazed. Weighs 4.3 pounds. It feels like 4.3. Slightly, slightly forward balanced. Um, axle axle 29.5. Brace height 6. Let off 75. Comes in 50, 60 or 70. Machine riser. It comes in camo or black, 26.5 to 30.5 um, twin cam. So twin cam with a yoke system built into the cam. So that's like your PSEs and Dartons. And string links. And that's about it. So now what's unique about this bow first off? So Toe Point or Di Diabo is going to be a new brand from Toe Point, just aimed at the kind of elite compound market, not having the beginner lines in it, just sort of top end. And that's what they've done with this bow. Um, so I don't even know the price point of this. I haven't even looked it up. So that's probably going to be hard because you're like, well, how much is this going to sell for? So rotating module here. Um, you've got a locking system there. I would like probably a locking system up here, the same as in the um, the bow I just looked <laughs> just looked at from um, Diabo called the Stronghold. They had a locking system there and a locking system there. Whether it's needed or not, that's another question. But I would like it. It's a roller. You can see the roller bearings in the cams, which is nice. They've got settings on the side here to show you what's what letter it is on um, to set the draw length which is nice. The cam's actually nicely machined. Lots of space here. Lighter cams make this bow faster. Machined um, yoke here. That's similar to your Matthews. Um, other companies use this, High Country. Uh, machine limb pockets. This is unique. This is a like a, this is the cable slide. This reminds me of the Bears and the Jennings of old. Um, Metal rollers down here. Now you can actually change the position of this in or out. This is unique. In or out. So you've got these different holes here. So you can move it up or down and move it in or out. And that's by these Allen keys that go into this riser here. That's pretty unique. Um, low amount stabilizer position. That's pretty cool. String sight is cool. Um, that's unique. I haven't seen one like that before. And it's kind of built into the riser. It's kind of built in, but, um, but it's not. That's kind of... Like, see here, like this piece here? You think that's built into the riser, but it's actually a separate piece. I don't know if that's going to vibrate against here or not. Um, graphics on the limbs look nice. Look, it's a nice feeling bow. Um, let's just try the draw cycle out. So this is a 60, it feels pretty, feels pretty hard. So it's really building up quite hard here. And I've hit the valley and it's still holding a fair bit of weight. I don't know if this is going to shoot 350, but it's going to be fast. Um, I think it's going to be fast because there's very little, very little let off. The valley's short. The draw cycle is pretty good. You can see these cams are a big cam, very much like the Bears and that type of cam system. It's like in a, is it kind of like a PSE cam system? I don't know. Nice string stop here. And I really like the groove that's in that draw stop. Maybe you can see that. I'm going to try and zoom in on that. But the little the draw stop's got a, like a groove in it for the string to sit in because sometimes with the modules if you pull it back the string pulls straight past that the design of that how it's got that groove just in there I'll try and zoom in so that groove that to me is clever um, 
this I didn't see that move that much and and kind of how it how that moves backwards it's kind of cool so that gets to the price point where's this going to sit on the market now I haven't looked at the price of this bow I haven't listed it so I'm just looking at this going well what can improve what can be better now I'm going to guess there's a decent manual which comes with this because there was with this stronghold I just did a review on I think this bow looks edgy I think the look looks nice now it doesn't look like a Hoyt no it doesn't does it look like a PSE no it doesn't because those bows have got their own look and feel and I think Diabo have come out with their own look and feel with this and I don't think it's a bad look and feel it kind of reminds me of a couple of other manufacturers that I don't, that I don't stock with this kind of design here um, I, I don't know what they are so <laughs> but it, the lines I like it's a kind of a cool looking design and definitely different to other bows how do I think this will shoot I think this will shoot pretty good um, where does this price point on the market and where do I expect it to be so your bottom line toe point bows retail in Australia for about 200 now this is clearly better than those so it's not in that price point toe point produce some other bows around the $400 mark which are better um, this bow is clearly better than those so this is clearly better than the $400 bow so that brings me to a $500 price point which is basically the start of the American beginner line compound bows now this bow is clearly better than those however you don't have that backup support in that lifetime warranty that you get from the American brands so how would this rate against the top of the line American bows look it's probably going to rate quite well against them um, to be honest with you um, but it's that poll the customer service buying a brand you don't know about the backup service the quality how's this bow going to be in a year's time those questions are the things on your mind um, when you're buying this kind of bow so I'm going to guess a price point in this bow where would I expect to see it on the market? I think if this bow is priced on the market at probably between $700 and $800 Australian dollars, that's about $500 American dollars. I think it's an interesting bow at that price. I don't know if you'll sell many of them because I think at that price point people will probably still buy the American product. Um, but the American products will, won't have limb pockets like this. They will be plastic. Um, and I think for me that's where the Chinese product the Chinese brand needs to pick up you know the customer service and the the whole support thing they need to be there while producing a quality product it's that support and the backup service and it's how much are you going to pay for that um, how much do you pay for a lifetime warranty I'm just going to check the poundage on this bow on a scale it definitely felt like 60 As I strain, <sighs> that was harder than I felt. Um, 58 pounds. Um, now this is a 60 pound bow. Would people accept 58 when they buy a 60? Probably not. If it was an American made product, they definitely wouldn't accept it. So, okay, so let's just address that point also. Now, how do you increase the poundage of your bow if it comes in under the pound? That's, you can either lengthen the string, which you really can't do, or you shorten your cables. So to increase this bow by about two pounds, you're gonna to have to twist up this string here. You need a bow press to do that. And I would do it by twisting it. I would take the string off here, off the cam, and give it some twists, in which, in which case I need to retime this cam to make sure top and bottom cams hit, hit at the same point. Now, two pounds is gonna be that much of cable adjustment. Literally, it'll be like three twists on the cable, maybe four twists on the cable to, to increase it two pounds. I think it should come out of the factory pre-tested on a bow scale. But honestly, I think this is a nice product. The edges are sharp. I'd probably like the edges a little bit more angled when I say angled 
less sharp on the edge. It's quite a, like if you got hit on the head by that, it would hurt. Um, so I'd probably like the edges a little bit curved, but the, the machining on this looks first class. I can't see any defects on it at all. Um, the black is like a matte black. It's nice. It's a, it's a pretty good, look, it's a pretty good product from what I can see. Now I'm going to do a bow, full bow review on this um, where I shoot it, put it through a chronograph and compare it. But I like these limb pockets. Now I'm just going to go, I normally in my reviews I compare this product to other ones on the market, similar price point. And I'm just going to say, look, I think this bow is going to be alright. It's just when you buy a new product and a new brand, you've got to take that in consideration. That's going to drop the price of that product because it's new on the market. And a bit like the Kia cars from Korea when they came out, they were cheaper and now they're expensive. Um, so I think Toe Point is very much in that, in that flavor of the market. They've started producing cheap products, got in the market, they're established, they're pumping products out, and now they're producing higher quality products, coming up with some of their own tech. I guess this is their tech. Um, so yeah, some of their designs are pretty, are pretty good. Um, American limbs, if I didn't mention that. Um, these are the same limbs as you see on most boat companies. So overall, the Vigor, I'm pretty interested to see how this shoots. And how interested am, am I? Well, I have the new Matthews in the Traverse and the Vertex. And I'm probably more interested to see how this shoots, which is kind of interesting because you think, oh, well, why wouldn't you want to try those? I guess it's because they look the same as they did last year, where this looks kind of new, the edges, the design looks new this looks new some new ideas and I'm just kind of interested to try out something new so we'll put some sights on this and do a full bow review hopefully this weekend I'm Stephen Han uh, from Archery Supplies um, thanks for watching and the more you shoot the better you shoot and also I would like full specs on the limb here to say what the poundage is what the draw length is what the string sizes are what the cable sizes are and even a sticker saying what size draw length is what size module because that would just make it easier for, for, for shop sellers and consumers nothing worse than grabbing a bow and going well what's my draw length what's it said on it's like I've got I don't know what this means one, two, three, I don't know what that means. Where if you had a little chart saying one means 29 inches, two means 30 inches, keep life simple for people. Um, so that's my point on that. But I think a pretty, pretty good product. I would like the ability to fit a two piece quiver to this because this is obviously a hunting bow. But overall, pretty good. I'm Stephen Han. Thanks for watching and have a nice night. Thanks, bye.